Okay. So, guys, welcome to the next module of our course. Uh, let's wait a bit for the presentation to be opened. And uh, our new module, uh, pro not, not the last one, but uh, I think the most important model called uh, test design and documentation. And I think uh, before we start uh, the today's lecture itself, we could uh, have uh, some contest, uh, some context and some um, ideas, points uh, about the next module that uh, we are starting today. Uh, Probably you all remember the troubleshooting module that you had uh, right before this lecture by Fyodor. And uh, I hope that everybody uh, remembers uh, the first lecture of our course, the introduction to the testing, where I uh, told you about the famous book by Glenford Myers, The Art of Software Testing, uh, that appeared uh, on 1979. And probably you remember that in this famous book, uh, he separated a troubleshooting from a testing and uh, a work uh, that is doing by developers from the work that is doing by testers themselves. And uh, right now we have, um, so we still have a troubleshooting, but um, the purpose of the troubleshooting is different. If we will compare with the troubleshooting from uh, the times of Glenford Myers book, because now the troubleshoot, the troubleshooting is our basis uh, for some abstract things that we will learn in this module. And the troubleshooting is very useful when we are trying to localize the defects. Uh, but anyway, uh, we cannot do testing without the troubleshooting and we cannot um, do the troubleshooting, uh, ad adequate troubleshooting without knowledge about uh, the testing itself. So what is the difference? right now, contemporary. Uh, what is the difference between troubleshooting and testing? When you are doing troubleshooting, you are um, doing it on the basis of your knowledge about the application structure, uh, about the, for example, three tire architecture that you consider it uh, with Fyodor. And uh, um, that will help you to guess where some um, errors could be. But um, this is used uh, only when you are doing some uh, testing uh, with the application, some dynamic testing of the application, some actions in the application. You are pressing buttons, you are uh, connecting to the server, uh, by SSH, uh, you are uh, creating some new, uh, you know, uh, folders. You are uh, requesting something from the API and so on. But um, the testing itself is not only about performing these uh, real actions, these dynamic actions in the application. The testing itself uh, is more about the abstraction, is more about the planning of your actions. And the idea of testing, the idea of the test design approaches is firstly to plan your actions based on your knowledge about the application, based on the customer specifications. And only then you are starting uh, the dynamic actions. So the testing is more abstract. 
the testing is more systematic because before performing some actions, you are planning what to do. Uh, you are thinking about special methods and approaches to create this harmonious system. Uh, based on this system, you will do the dynamic actions. Uh, and this is not all. Uh, you should uh, think about the priorities of your actions because you always have no time to do everything. You always have no time to cover everything, every combinations, every scenarios with tests. So you should see this structure, see this system, and uh, think about what set of tests are necessary and sufficient right here, right for this particular functionality. And not only the functionality, but uh, what is necessary on this particular project phase. Because uh, you can think about, for example, some new application, completely new application that uh, is started, uh, st started to, to be developed right now. And probably it is very raw right now. And uh, it doesn't make sense to test some uh, interesting but not useful combinations uh, of parameters uh, or some uh, interesting but not useful uh, user scenarios because it is just a start. And probably uh, everything that works right now is some happy path like user login to the application, user is performing some uh, typical simple actions through the application and logs out from the application and that's all. So this is a priority. So to uh, transfer uh, the troubleshooting to the testing itself, you should be more abstract, more systematic. Uh, you should think about the necessary and sufficient set of tests on this particular uh, project uh, stage, in this particular project phase. And this is uh, what uh, our new module about, about how to use uh, different test design approaches, how to make this uh, harmonious system, how to plan your testing. Because uh, you are very clever, you can do the troubleshooting and uh, you know everything, maybe not everything, but you know a lot about uh, the architecture of applications, but it is not enough still. So uh, what is the structure of uh, our new module? We will start from levels of testing, from the testing pyramid, because it is very logical to uh, um, step by step move from troubleshooting to testing through the testing levels. Uh, our next lecture will be about the specifications, uh, requirement, analysis, and analysis. Um, requirements of customer. We will try to assess requirement. Uh, we will try to understand the difference between technical requirements, user requirement, and uh, business requirement. And we will try to um, start asking some virtual analyst about these requirements. And uh, after we will be able to ask questions about the requirement uh, to assess the requirement quality, we could start with the test design. Let me step a bit back to this picture from our um, 
first slide. And uh, you can see here a very interesting schema of uh, software test design techniques. Uh, static and dynamic testing, uh, specification-based and experience-based and structure-based testing, uh, different types of reviews, different types of static analysis. But uh, you as a testers, is as testers, um, should be con concentrated on this branch, specification-based techniques, because probably you uh, heard about um, the description of uh, testing, the definition maybe of testing, that the testing is comparison between uh, requirement and actual behavior of the software. So this is our uh, Mo the most important branch of uh, software test design techniques. And that's why we have uh, one lecture about uh, experience-based, structure-based, and static methods of test design because uh, they are not so important, but uh, they should be known by tester anyway, because uh, there are some cases when you need that test design techniques to be used. And two lectures about specification-based uh, test design techniques. One about uh, two simplest things, uh, equivalence classes and boundary analysis, analysis and um, one lecture about more complicated things. You can see them here as well, decision table, state transition, use case testing. And um, there is some more techniques, very interesting technique, uh, pairwise testing. We will uh, consider pairwise testing as well. I don't know why uh, the pairwise testing is absent here because uh, it is very popular maybe are more popular than decision, state transition, and use case. So we will consider it differently as well. Uh, and uh, when we uh, will be able to use all that, we will move to types of testing, functional, non-functional, regression, and so on, and testing documentation. Uh, because uh, some courses actually uh, propose testing documentation as uh, a first thing to, uh, to learn. For example, if you uh, have ever um, complete uh, that free course from Yandex Practicum, uh, you probably saw that uh, writing defects uh, or writing test cases is the first thing that uh, they are doing. Uh, we in mentor piece uh, think that it is not very correct because testing documentation is just a description uh, according to some rules, of course, a description of your ideas regarding testing. And when you have no ideas completely, because you are not able to use the test design techniques. You are not uh, uh, able to um, use your knowledge about application architecture and so on. You cannot uh, correctly describe the situation. And it doesn't make sense to learn testing documentation, learn how to create this case or learn how to create defect without this knowledge. That's why testing documentation is almost at the end of our course, because this is the result of everything you uh, already learned on the course. And one more bonus lecture will be during the internship, uh, test design in real life, uh, test coverage, uh, and um, we 
will try to apply all the knowledge to the project that you will have uh, on the internship, just to map your knowledge, your skills to the real project. We will try to uh, apply everything. And I think it could be helpful for you on the internship. So this is about the module. Uh, right now we are moving to the lecture itself. This one, levels of testing. Uh, so if you have questions about uh, the module, this is the time to ask. Okay, seem that no questions for now. So let me step further to the levels of testing lecture. Uh, remember this picture from the previous lectures? Yes. Yes, yes great. So firstly, you should remember everything from the troubleshooting because we will repeat it. So the plan for this lecture, uh, it is a huge one, but don't be afraid. Uh, we will not sit here till the morning, I'm, I promise you. So we will start from uh, the repetition, short repetition, not uh, same time as you spent uh, on Fyodor's lecture, of course. Uh, short repetition about the three ter architecture. And then uh, we will try to map this uh, concept of three-tier architecture to the testing pyramid, to levels of testing. And then we will step-by-step step consider every layer of this pyramid, every level of testing that uh, is included to this pyramid. We will start from unit testing and uh, we will uh, see how uh, database models unit testing, backend models and UI models unit testing look like. Uh, then we will uh, take a glance to the integration testing, uh, module plus module inside one level, between levels. And of course, we will uh, refer to our application that small one from this picture with the front end, back end, and the database that you probably already um, touched a bit before uh, to um, keep to, to, to have this idea in mind. What is integration testing and uh, what is the difference between unit testing? And then system testing. We will talk a bit about user scenarios. Uh, what is it? Uh, and end-to-end uh, -end testing as uh, one type of uh, system testing. System plus uh, third-party applications. Uh, and uh, acceptance testing, what is it? Why acceptance? Uh, what are the acceptance criteria for the application? And why do we need this uh, level? And um, at the end of the, of the lecture, uh, we will talk about uh, boxes. Uh, probably if you uh, read some books or saw some uh, testing videos before entering the course, probably you heard about uh, this uh, concept of black uh, and white, white box and uh, gray box probably as well. Uh, we will consider these approaches um, regarding the levels of testing. The, uh, we will consider the connection between black, white, and gray boxes uh, with levels of testing with unit integration system and uh, acceptance testing, because uh, this is very important thing to understand uh, which level uh, is about which approach. Okay. Uh, and uh, one more um, introduction. <laughs> for today's lecture. We have uh, today uh, a huge introduction. Uh, whom are we talking about today? Uh, firstly, customers, users, developers, and testers. 
why do we need all that persons here? Because every level of testing pyramid is about um, about uh, participation of uh, some of these uh, people. On some levels, we will have only developers, on some only testers, or testers plus somebody else. And this is important as well. So again, troubleshooting three tier, tier architecture. Uh, Fyodor was very glad <laughs> I shown uh, I, I shown uh, him this uh, presentation uh, to ask for his uh, opinion about this presentation and uh, she he he uh, almost um, uh, was crying from gladness okay so the uh, Three tier application architecture. Uh, okay, who can tell me what is it and what tires do we have in the application and why do we need these levels? Who remembers? Uh, Lily, I, I think. Uh... Why we need uh, yeah front end and back end and database uh, because uh, uh, they uh, use different uh, languages uh, mm -hmm. different approaches uh, and um, logically it is uh, better when uh, you have. Uh, different tires uh, for creating and uh, even for troubleshooting mm -hmm. uh, yeah and um, all, all uh, these tires uh, they do different uh, functions mm -hmm. like presentation tire it's uh, our customer customer not customers our users uh, mm -hmm. users logical that's uh, internal program mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and database uh, uh, serves our data keeps uh, them uh, and sort them out mm -hmm. and all them are absolutely different mm -hmm. that's my opinion mm -hmm. yes you're right Mitchislav. thank you uh, and who can tell me um some situation where we will definitely need different uh, tiers, different layers of the application. Some situation from a real life of development the application. Oh, I think that's the easiest one. That's like a, a internet store. So. Okay. Well, yes, this is this, this is a type of application, but uh, some maybe some situation when we uh, extremely need to have different layers of the application. Just think about it. Maybe you you will have some ideas. Uh, if we find the bug. Uh, according to the level, we, we will know uh, which uh, team mm -hmm. is responsible for, for that layer mm -hmm. and uh, who we need to send uh, the bug. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. Okay, I will tell you. So... <laughs> Uh, imagine the situation when we have uh, some um, internet store, for example, from uh, Vyacheslav's example. Uh, and uh, we have uh, three tier architecture of this store, some front end that a user can use, uh, some back end with the logic of the store and some database. And one beautiful day, uh, customers, uh, come to you 
and um, said, said uh, that um, uh, now we should rewrite the uh, user interface completely. So, uh, for example, we have some user interface with uh, some green buttons, uh, some uh, fields where you can um, write your name and uh, create account and so on and uh, buy something from this uh, from this interface. Uh, but your customers now consider that the user interface is not beautiful or it is not according to uh, the rebranded uh, rebranded company. Uh, this is not uh, needed color. This is not needed uh, form of the buttons, uh, not needed order of the fields and so on and so on. So uh, the user interface should be completely rewritten from the, the scratch. And now imagine that we don't have this three tier of architecture. We have everything mixed as a monolith, like uh, we had uh, last days uh, before this uh, uh, beautiful uh, structure imagined by clever people. Uh, everything is mixed and to rewrite the user interface, we should practically rewrite everything. Uh, database uh, integration, uh, backend functions, and so on, so on. Uh, but if we have that three tire application architecture, we can simply take this front end, throw it to the trash, and uh, put another one to this place. Then check the integration between the front end and the back end. Uh, in, just in case, check the integration from back end to, to the database and back. And that's all. So if we are changing one of the layer, we are not touching the other ones. Okay. And this is the real situation uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the application development. And uh, if we have su such a situation, uh, this three layer arch uh, application architecture is not about the beauty, is not about the structure, is not about the um, rules of uh, the application development. It is about the speed of development it is about the um, probability of errors. Because you could uh, separate one layer, one tire, and do something with this separated uh, item, and don't touch the other uh, layers together with it. So this is the idea. Yes, we have different teams. We have uh, uh, different uh, type of, types of defect, of course, but we have um, the um, idea of uh, such probable situations when we could uh, process only one layer without touching the others. Okay. Anyway, we. Uh, I think repeated this uh, concept of uh, presentation logic and data tire. If uh, there is anybody in the group uh, who didn't catch the idea still, please uh, tell me right now, because uh, we will go further and uh, it uh, could be a bit hard to, to be back. Don't be shy, guys. Of course. Okay. Let's think that everybody caught the idea and we could uh, go further. So uh, let's uh, continue a bit with the troubleshooting. And probably you uh, remember this particular slide. 
uh, about the possible issues and the points of failure. We have here database issues. We have here network issues, uh, backend and frontend issues. And uh, when we are doing the troubleshooting, we are keeping in mind that uh, the errors could be either in some separate uh, layer, some separate tire of the application, or probably that issues could uh, affect some other tires, okay? Because uh, if the network is broken, for example, probably you will see the result uh, on the UI because uh, if the network is broken, you uh, will have some uh, functions uh, unaccessible from the UI, from uh, the API. But anyway, the troubleshooting is about your experience, is about when you see that uh, something is not uh, working on the UI, probably something happened with uh, the backend or database or networks. Uh, but this is your experience, not uh, the system. Uh, and now we will try to create the system from this uh, troubleshooting issues. And uh, we will use our application. Uh, I will not um, stay on this slide, actually. This is only for you to remember how to use the, this uh, small application. And uh, what uh, accounts do we have? Uh, and we use we can use them on the UI. What uh, database uh, do we have? And the uh, front and the back end and so on. We will refer to this slide from time to time just uh, to uh, to see how does it look like uh, in our application. And right now it is time to uh, learn about the testing pyramid. Testing pyramid. Uh, Ron, I think Ron Ross. Okay. Uh, testing pyramid is such a thing uh, with different layers of testing. These layers of testing are not uh, really directly mapped to the layers of the uh, uh, application, to the layers of our three-tier application, uh, three-tier architecture, but it could be connected with that uh, three-tier application structure. Uh, so the bottom of the pyramid is the unit testing. The testing of uh, the smallest objects of our application. Uh, typically, the smallest objects of our application are, uh, are um, the methods or functions uh, in um, understanding of uh, programming language. So if we are talking about Java, we will talk about methods small pieces of code uh, with uh, some defined functionality. Like uh, this piece of code called method, uh, for example, can add two numbers. And another one can multiply two numbers. And another one can uh, multiply, then divide two numbers. Uh, that pieces of code are called methods. Methods in Java function in Python, functions in uh, SQL that you uh, know a bit. So the unit testing is testing of separate pieces of code. Integration testing. Uh, as you can catch, uh, can guess from this name, this is the testing of integration of some pieces. And what pieces? we will see a bit further. System testing. Uh, this is the testing from the point of view of user because uh, here we are testing the system at a whole, not divided 
to pieces, not separated to some parts, but the system as a whole uh, object without any uh, parts inside. And acceptance testing, uh, you can probably guess as well from the name, uh, some way connected with uh, some acceptance criteria from probably a customer. And now let's go further and uh, we'll try to map all this pyramid to our uh, famous schema of the application. So we could use the unit testing when we are testing the database, the backend and frontend methods separately. We could use the integration testing when we are thinking about set errors between frontend and backend and database. And the system testing. Uh, this arrow is our point of interest here because uh, this is the user scenarios. Uh, here could be not customer, but user. So uh, we are thinking about uh, how our users are uh, communicating with the application. And acceptance tester, uh, testing is not about the uh, communication with the application itself, but about some the most important uh, scenarios. So remember this uh, picture. Probably I will uh, stay here for five seconds for everybody to remember it. And we will go further to the um, description of every layer of the pyramid. Okay, unit testing. Uh, pay attention to this picture. These are developers. That four guys with uh, strange faces that are developers. And remember that the unit testing is the only testing uh, approach that is used only by developers. Uh, from time to time, uh, some automation testers uh, could use unit testing could do unit testing, but it is not uh, a good process. If we are talking about a good process of development, uh, unit testing is the responsibility of uh, developer team only. And what is it? Uh, let's remember our database module. And I hope that everybody remembers it. So, this is the schema of our database of uh, this uh, small application. Uh, we have only two, uh, two tables here, login and troll. And um, imagine that we have some uh, part of the application that is communicating with this database. So the database is some storage where we have tables, where we have um, data, uh, and we should communicate with this storage in some way. And we have a special method uh, that is doing this work. Uh, here you can see some simple um, SQL requests. Again, I really hope that everybody remembers uh, this part of our course. Uh, this uh, word is not uh, known by you probably, but uh, execute, you could uh, probably uh, guess what does it mean because uh, this is the execution of some function uh, in the SQL. So this is the separate method that could uh, select something from the database. And uh, if we are doing the unit testing, our task here uh, in the top left corner of the slide to check how the database functions work separately. 
uh, doing by developers uh, who are creating a special things in the code called unit tests. Unit test should have uh, the special check inside uh, called assert and uh, the expected and a real or actual result inside this assert. If the expected and actual results are the same, the test passed, unit test passed. If not the same, the unit test failed. So they are creating that special pieces of code, code called unit tests with that asserts inside that are comparing the actual and expected result and then run these unit tests as it is the real code. So this is not about the manual testing. This is not about uh, even the automation testing. This is about uh, some special pieces of code written by developers that are checking the methods. So uh, you should not uh, know about uh, the unit tests at all, uh, or maybe a bit, but this is for your you know, background knowledge, just to understand what does it mean. And uh, I could uh, show you some other pieces of code. This is the API methods unit testing. Uh, the same principle. Uh, developers are writing some pieces of code that are checking some um, methods of API. Here you can see that, that line. Logging all, so probably this piece of code are checking this uh, API uh, request. How will it work? And this is the assert. Expects uh, internal server error in this case. So um, the uh, purpose of this particular unit test is to check how the API functions work, work separately, uh, doing by developers uh, who are creating the unit test for each API request. And the same could be done for UI methods. Because the UI, you remember that the UI is not only buttons and fields that you can see, uh, this is about some scripts and probably I hope that you remember uh, the description uh, from Evgeny's lectures. So uh, everything says us that we could uh, write a unit test for these UI scripts. And this is a test for the login page. Again, uh, separately, uh, separate work of uh, UI functions doing by developers, uh, create a unit test for each UI function. Uh, questions about the unit testing. Everything is clear, or oh, you didn't catch anything from my long speech? Clear. For me, it's clear. Clear. OK. Hopefully, it is clear for everybody, not only for two persons who answered me. OK. Right now, the integration testing. It is more interesting for us because this is about your particular work. This is not about the work of some uh, Mirage developer team who are doing something inside uh, their own room. Uh, 
This is about your job. So the integration testing. Um, I would propose to see the slide and to have some explanation from me, and then I will show you uh, how to do it uh, in the application. So uh, we did uh, all the unit testing. Just imagine that uh, this work is completed for this particular functionality and all our unit tests uh, are passed. And right now we could check the integration between units. Uh, our units could be um, any size. If we are talking about the integration between two units, two modules inside one layer of the application, it is about the integration testing as well. But it is not so interesting. So for example, you have uh, some uh, method that uh, uh, multiplying to two numbers and then uh, other method gets the result from the multiplying and dividing uh, this result by, uh, by two, for example. And we are checking the integration between these two pieces of code. And uh, we are trying to be sure that everything works. But it is not so interesting. The interesting thing is the integration between the application tires. For example, between the database and the backend. Uh, so we have the database with uh, everything stored in the tables. And we have the API uh, that could get all the information from the database and show it uh, in the postman or uh, move this information to the next uh, tire to the front end and show the user the information. But uh, here we are interested in this arrow uh, from the backend to the database and back. And this is our integration testing point for now. Uh, okay, for example, we could get the login list, uh, then add the new login to the database and that then get login list back. If you have uh, the postman and the application opened right now, you can do uh, together with me, but if not, it is not uh, mandatory. You can just uh, see um, the, um, my screen and uh, my actions. Okay, so this is uh, the postman. Uh, do you remember the postman? Did you try the postman with Evgeny? Yes. yes. Yes, great. So this is uh, not a new thing for you. So this is the postman. And uh, we will try to do something with it. Uh, OK, so this is our. Um... Uh, I'm so sorry for interrupting. Uh -huh. I, I don't see postman on the screen. Oh, sorry. Guys, uh, I will reshare the screen because uh, I share it uh, probably only the Chrome. What about now? It's okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, for pointing me. Of course, uh, I I completely forgot that I shared it as a wrong the wrong thing. Okay, so this is the postman. And uh, we have here, okay, we, we were talking about login, let it be login all. And we send the request and we see the response here. This is the list of our login in a JSON format with uh, login, password, role ID, and description and ID of the uh, login. Okay, so uh, we are to test the integration right now. And we are interested in, uh, on the scene, how this information from the database will be moved uh, to the API. So probably 
If we will uh, add some new login, probably it will be shown here in the API response because the information should be uh, moved here. Okay, uh, what do we have here? Root, Kosha, Kolya, Fell, Lil, Bobby, Max, Test, Test One. Uh, okay, let's go to the database. This is our uh, debugger. And uh, let's insert some new login to the login table. Who can tell me what should I do to insert new login? I will show you the columns. What should I write here in SQL field to add something to login table? Insert. Uh -huh. Insert. There is a tip here. Insert. Uh, uh, into tab table. Uh -huh. Into. Into table. Uh, we are trying to add new login, so we probably need a login table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And value. Values. But probably you forgot something. Uh, what the should name, I? Uh, column. Uh, the uh -huh. name of column. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ID. Login. Password. Roll ID. Uh huh. Values. That would be 100. Uh, I don't remember actually which one is the last one, but probably we don't have 100 ID here. Login. What types of the login do we have here? Archer, 255. So this is the string, right? Login M. CI, let it be the name of your group. And then password. And then the role ID, let it be one. Okay. Okay, so this message, uh, says us that uh, everything is okay. Uh, we have one updated rows and everything is added to the table. So let's be back here to the API and repeat our request. So Yes, here is it. So right now we did the integration testing between the database and the API. Because we did something in the database and we checked that uh, this information is successfully moved to the API and we can get it by uh, running the request and we will have it in the response. So the integration is working. Role ID, we didn't uh, add this information, admin and administration, but uh, the API processed something and uh, gets that the role ID uh, one is uh, admin and uh, administration description. Okay, and uh, it's time to go 
I think, uh, further to the next slide. The integration between the UI and API. Unfortunately, our current application cannot do this because uh, the API can only get uh, the list of roles and the list of uh, the um, users, logins. But if uh, we could get the information um, about the um, one login, we could uh, uh, not not the information get, get uh, sorry not uh, getting the information from my login if we could uh, add new login from the api we could uh, perform these tests but it will be the same already uh, actually uh, and uh, we will um, probably uh, add some uh, new login from the api by performing some request and getting some response and then check on the UI that this login is actually working and we could login with these credentials. Okay. Another one, uh, even more interesting integration test. We are integrating UI and API and the database together. And this is not about the system testing because uh, this is not about the user's point of view. This is still uh, the um, technical point of view. We are still checking these errors, not the system as a whole. So uh, what could we do? We could, for example, try to log in from UI add new login from database, check API, then try to login by this login from the UI. And actually uh, half of the work we already did because we added a new login from the database and we checked that the API uh, understood this uh, new login and could uh, return it in the response in the list. And right now, let's go further and uh, go to the front end here and check that our new login is working. But probably we should uh, copy and paste the login from here because I don't remember what is the order of our numbers here. And let's open the UI. And let's try to log in with these credentials. This is the login and the password. Yeah. We've got it, it is working. Uh, so right now we are continuing to test the integration between that three tiers of the application. Firstly, we check the integration between the database and the API. And right now we checked uh, the integration between the database, the API and the UI. And everything is working, seems to at least. So this is integration testing. Where is the slides? Slides are here. Okay. Let me open the presentation, the full screen, for you to see it a bit better. Okay. And before you can uh, ask 
questions about the integration testing, uh, I will give you some more information about the integration. Because the integration is probably the most interesting level of, level of testing and uh, there are a lot of bottlenecks there. There are a lot of uh, points, there are a lot of situations, different situations there. Because we are talking about uh, the connection between different parts of the application. And this is um, typically the most complicated uh, part of the development. Because you could, uh, you could write one part of the application and it will be working. You could write another part of the application and will be working. And when you will try to connect these two parts of the application, it will not be working. Because probably uh, in some part of the application, you forgot to do something. Uh, you, For example, from one part of the application, you should uh, you should uh, request some parameter and uh, the other part of the application cannot give this parameter to this first part because developers uh, just forgot to include this parameter to the, uh, to the response. Uh, this is a very typical situation and that's why the integration testing is the most interesting and the most complicated thing. Uh, from uh, all the levels. And that's why there are uh, several types how we can test the application uh, if we are talking about the integration. Firstly, uh, we could use different integration order. If we will see this picture again, this schema, uh, we could uh, we could guess that we uh, probably uh, are able to move from the bottom to the top. Uh, firstly, check this error from the database to the back end, then this error from the back end to the front end, and that's uh, and um, after this, this probably this error to the user's actions. This is the integration from bottom to top. Very simple. So we are moving from this module to this part of the application. Uh, the integration testing from the top to the bottom is from front end to the database. And which order is to choose depends on the situation on the project, uh, the situation with the development of the application. As you uh, uh, told me in the beginning of the lecture, and you were absolutely right, that uh, different tiers of the application could be written by different teams. Uh, and if you are thinking about that different teams as uh, about persons who are sitting in one office or even in one room, just in different corners. In the left corner, uh, there are uh, front-end developers. In the right corner, there are back-end developers. And in the middle of the room, there are database developers. No, this is not a real situation, at least uh, after the coronavirus and uh, sometimes even before the coronavirus. Because that um, three teams could be, uh, firstly, see, uh, could sit in completely different offices, in different countries, in different, different uh, time zones completely different time zones. So we, we could have a front end uh, team in, uh, you know, Armenia, for example, and uh, database team in USA. It, it is very, very typical situation right now. And uh, secondly, that teams could be from different companies. Because, uh, for example, the 
database development could be uh, performed inside the company, the company of customers, because this is a complicated thing and uh, they hired uh, the developers uh, to the company directly. But they thought that front-end development is not so complicated and some vendors could write the front-end. So we will have uh, the database development inside the company in USA and front-end development outside the company uh, performed by vendors from any other country, from any other time zone. And uh, because of this situation, the speed of development could be very different. And if we um, have um, the development in such, such a very shared team, uh, the database could be ready already and the front end not ready. But we all uh, already have database and backend. And we could go from bottom to the top and we could start from the integration between database and backend because the front end is not ready. So it will be the integration from the bottom to the top. And back other situation from the front end to the database because the front end is ready. Uh, other modules are not ready, or front end is, for example, more important for the customers, and they uh, decided to start from the front end integration testing, front end and back end. So the integration testing could be from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom. But that's not all. What is sandwich? Uh, almost the same. But we are not moving from uh, database or front end, we are moving from uh, the back end. We firstly are checking the integration between the back end and other modules, and then uh, go to uh, the integration between the other parts of uh, the system. Uh, the most um, awful thing is big bang, big bang uh, integration testing. Uh, we are integrating all the parts together and then checking everything together. Not step by step, like we did. Not uh, from database to the back end and the back end to the front end and then uh, together. No, we have no time. This is the reason. This is actually the only reason to use a Big Bang uh, method of integration testing. We have no time for the integration testing, but we should do something. And this is better than nothing. And in this situation, we will have a Big Bang, bang integration testing. We are collecting everything together and then uh, trying to test the integration. And uh, sometimes we will have a big ban instead of the software. But sometimes it could be used. Uh, and uh, the most interesting uh, thing is stop and test drivers, or uh, instead of test drivers, you could use the word mock. So stops and mocks, what are they? So uh, as I already said, in a shared team from different um, companies could be a situation when some level of the application is ready and some other level is not ready. Uh, Okay, we could um, do this uh, bottom from, no, not from the bottom, from, we are going from the top. We tested this integration between front end and back end. And now we are ready to this arrow, to this integration between the back end and the database. But our database team is not ready. Our database module is not ready as well. 
Uh, we have no database. We have no functionality that is working with the database. We uh, have nothing at all. But our customers are uh, absolutely sure that we could do something. So guys, you are clever. You could test the integration without uh, any integration. You are developers, you are testers. Uh, why you cannot do it? We cannot understand. Uh, and actually, it is more easy to really uh, think about something, uh, really imagine something, then uh, to explain the customers why we cannot do it. Uh, okay, so remember it, it's a typical situation as well. Uh, so, and really developers uh, created something that could allow us to test this integration without uh, one ready module. And this something called uh, stops and mocks. What is it? So we have no database model here. And uh, instead of the database, in, and instead of the fun functionality that is working with the database, we could create some, uh, some stop. Uh, this is really a stop, uh, some uh, little program that could do nothing except um, returning some data depending on uh, the request. How does it look like? For example, uh, you are going to check the situation when uh, the list of rows is empty. So we have empty table in the da database and uh, we uh, want to test the API, uh, to test the request of uh, Login all that we've checked already uh, when nothing in the database, but we don't have the database. Uh, we could create this uh, small application and we could say this application, then if uh, the um, request from our real API contains uh, some mm, special thing, like a password, uh, but not a password to the application, but uh, some password uh, for spice, okay? Uh, if we have this key, key phrase in the request, please return me um, empty, empty data. But we don't have any database. We don't have any tables. We have only this small application that could recognize the request, recognize that we are asking about the empty data and return this empty data. And that's all. And uh, we could test this integration. And we could test how the backend reacts to this empty data. We don't need the database to test the reaction of the API. Uh, this stop is enough. Is it clear, guys? Or you have questions about this? Absolutely, yes, it's, it's clear. Uh, it's clear, but uh, this is a very simple test. You can test only one uh, request. No, and... uh, you can you can create uh, the application in the way uh, that it will be reacting to uh, a lot of different uh, different requests. Like uh, if you have this key phrase in the request, you should uh, return the empty data. If it has a, a key phrase in the request, you should return the 505 error. Uh, 
uh, and doesn't matter if we have server at all or not. If this key word or key phrase, please return 400 error from the database or from the API, if we are talking about uh, stubbing the API. If we have uh, this key phrase, uh, please return the full list of the roles. So we could make it wider and make it um, according our needs. If we have to test uh, 100 different requests, we will uh, write the application that will react to these uh, 100 uh, requests. It can take much more time to create such application. Yes, yes, that's, <laughs> that's, <database. laughs> that's definitely true. <laughs> but this is the life because uh, yes, it could uh, be uh, created uh, longer than a real module. Uh, it could contain um, own defects inside actually. And we could not be sure that uh, this stop is absolutely clear from the defects because it is a program and any program ca could contain defects. Uh, but in some situations, we have no choice because of course we could uh, create this database module uh, not so, using not so long time, but uh, we have no rights to create this module because this is the vendor's responsibility. We could not get this work from vendors by some political reasons. Uh, political, I mean, not uh, word poli politics, but uh, uh, politics inside the company. Uh, because this is very complicated thing in all the cases. Uh, and uh, we will uh, create this tab instead of uh, waiting of uh, this uh, database module to be ready uh, by vendors. So a lot of reasons could be. Uh, and uh, sometimes um, this uh, application is simpler than the real one. And it is... Uh, easier to create the stop than uh, to wait uh, for this um, real module to be ready. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the Hello. question. Uh -huh. Hello, Lilia. I also yeah. have a question. And when uh, our database is created, should we repeat this integration test? Yes. Or... Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yes, you will do a double work. <laughs> but that's wonderful. <laughs> yes, that's wonderful. Yes. You are testers, you love your job, and uh, double work is a very, very beautiful thing. Yeah. But uh, probably not uh, all the tests, because. Um, if you are sure in your API and you tested everything uh, through the stop uh, and you have no time right now to retest everything, uh, it could be uh, limited by uh, happy passes. But uh, it depends on the real situation. If you have time to retest everything, you will retest everything. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, and what is the mock? What is the difference between stop and mock? Uh, mock is always uh, almost the same as stop, but uh, our stop can only listen to some requests from a ready module and uh, answer to the questions, to the requests, and that's all. Uh, mock is a bit more complicated 
uh, application uh, and uh, mock could process the requests some way, uh, have some logic, logic inside, and even can send the request itself. So, uh, for example, if we uh, like on, on this picture, if we uh, gonna mock the SMTP server, SMTP server is a scene for uh, sending and receiving the emails, as you probably know, uh, stop is not enough and we should uh, process some requests some way and uh, imitate some real post, uh, post server, SMTP server. And in this case, we will need a mock. Uh, so we could um, use mocks if um, the mock creation is easier than the creation of uh, a real module. And uh, it could be, um, it will not take uh, such a long time for now. But anyway, like uh, with the stop case, uh, if we are talking about mocks, we anyway uh, should use mocks only for, for now for uh, this phase of the integration testing. And when uh, the real module will be ready, we will retest everything using the real module or uh, even uh, or at least at least happy passes with this real module and uh, to sum up this uh, integration tests with the uh, stops and mocks please take a look here pay attention that uh, we have here testers and developers. Uh, this is about the collaboration of developers team and testers team. Because if we have um, a very professional automation testers, they could create stops and mocks themselves as a se separate programs. But if uh, our automation uh, testing team is not so professional, or we don't have the automation testing team. We don't have the testers who who is uh, who are able to write code. We will uh, ask for help from developers team, and in such a situation, this is the responsibility and this is the job of uh, our developers team to create mocks and stops. So it could be either automation team or developers team, depending on the situation. Any other questions here? Lilia, uh, uh -huh. could you please tell mocks and stubs are always written for a particular application or there are some, I don't know, custom mm -hmm. stubs which mm -hmm. we can use just by or in internet? Uh -huh. Thank you for the question. It is really interesting. And um, I could say that uh, there are some libraries, developer libraries, for writing mocks and stubs. So uh, this is not about uh, writing uh, something from scratch. Uh, this is about the customizing of uh, a library. Uh, of course, uh, they could write from scratch if uh, any of custom libraries uh, cannot fit the demands of uh, the application. But uh, there are a lot of uh, special tools and the special libraries for uh, different programming languages. So what is library in programming languages uh, for those who probably don't know this uh, this term uh, this is the piece of code that could be reused inside the codes like uh, 
contemporary uh, programming is like uh, building a home from uh, from bricks. Uh, we have a lot of different bricks, and you could uh, choose needed brick, needed library, and use it in your code uh, with some customization. And the same about mocks and stops. We have sub -library, such libraries, uh, for example, Varimock. You could uh, check at home if you're interested in this uh, topic. Uh, we could use this Varimock for uh, mocking some uh, application. Uh, and of course, you should customize this library because uh, uh, this is not such a universal thing that uh, you could just take and use without any customization. But anyway, um, that, uh, using that customizable thing is easier than uh, writing the stops and mock from scratch. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That was a very interesting question, really. Okay. Let's go to the next level. Okay, uh, system and end-to-end -end testing. Uh, this is more easy, actually. Uh, and from my point of view, not so interesting because we are now talking not about some uh, inside technical things inside the application, we are talking about user scenarios, but it is needed as well. Because we should remember that, yes, we are very familiar with the application. We are very familiar with the structure, with the layers, with the tires and with all that stuff about the application, but we should check the application from user's point of view as well, because we are not a we are not developers, we are testers, and this user's point of view should be kept in, the, in our mind. And uh, when everything is tested, we are going to the next level of the pyramid, to the system testing approach. Uh, we are checking the user scenarios or uh, other term here is business scenarios. Uh, if we are checking about, if we are telling about user scenarios, uh, it is uh, more about uh, what user will do in the application. And if we are talking about uh, business scenarios uh, term, this is more about what <clears throat> particular things, what particular functionality is more important for the business and um, more important for getting money from uh, this application. Uh, so all the levels here are great because we are not thinking about these levels when we are doing the system testing, uh, doing the system testing. Uh, the only exception, if we found some defect and we should localize this defect, we should, we should troubleshoot the application, we should find the place where the application is broken. And when we found such a situation, we uh, are starting to think about these uh, levels again. And uh, we are starting to dive into these layers. But uh, when we are just uh, doing some scenarios, performing some scenarios, and we didn't find uh, any, um, any mistakes in the application, we are not thinking about uh, their uh, deep levels. We are thinking only about uh, user scenarios. And um, pay attention that um, very um, typical mistake of um, junior testers, those who just uh, begin 
uh, to work as testers is uh, to ignore business cases and to concentrate on these uh, levels only. Because, uh, yes, uh, I absolutely agree that uh, testing API or testing the database is uh, maybe interesting and uh, system testing uh, user scenarios are maybe uh, not so interesting, but uh, we should remember about users, we should remember about business, we are doing the application for business and for the users, and we should uh, keep this approach in mind. We should concentrate on this approach. We should remember uh, about the business needs. When we start uh, talking about the requirements, we will be back to this point again. But just the idea to your mind that it is important. Uh, so we are checking user scenarios. For example, how users logins and logouts. For example, test case number one. Let's return to our application. Sign out and let's start from the beginning. Okay, so right now we are doing the system testing and we are doing user scenarios of uh, how to log in with uh, root credentials, how to see this picture and how to sign out. This is the scenario. Of course, our application is very, very small, but uh, if we will be talking about uh, more huge applications, we, our user scenarios uh, will, of course, be much longer then these uh, three steps. But pay attention that I didn't open uh, the developer tools. I didn't open the Postman. I didn't open the database. Uh, right now, I'm testing the system as a monolith. This is a system testing approach. And uh, uh, another thing, another type of uh, this approach is an end-to-end -end scenarios. So what is the difference between end-to-end -end and system testing? For our mm, current application, no difference. Between we have only the system and we have no uh, third-party applications that could be uh, integrated with the system. Uh, but if we have um, not one system, but some uh, set of the systems. For example, uh, you have the uh, internet store and probably you think that the internet store is a very simple thing with that uh, catalog and uh, project, uh, not project, uh, product uh, page and maybe some user account and the page for creating an order. Uh, in real life, any internet store is a very complicated thing, very complicated op application because uh, we have some special uh, third party application for managing the inventory. We have some third party application for managing some uh, discounts. Another third party application for managing the logistics. Uh, when we created the order, we need some logistics to be applied to this order because we don't know uh, where to, uh, to move this order, where to where our customer lives and how to do it, because uh, it could be from one uh, side of the country to another side. And we should use some third party application to count this logistics. And if we have such a complicated system uh, or set of systems even, uh, in some uh, cases, we need uh, some special type of testing uh, called end-to-end -end testers testing. Uh, and uh, the scenarios we are doing called end-to-end uh, -end scenarios. 
all the steps using all the third party applications. So from logging in by a new customer to uh, having this order uh, delivered to the door of this customer. This is the end-to-end, long, long end-to-end scenario. So uh, in this case, system testing will be uh, our um, internet store only without any logistics, without any inventory uh, checking, without any reporting. So only making the order and uh, that last message that your order is successfully created, please wait for the call from our operator. That will be the end of our scenario. But if we are talking about the end-to-end scenario, we should uh, go further to the logistics systems, to uh, inventory systems, uh, to uh, delivery systems, maybe several systems everywhere. And we should uh, go further to the uh, order that have just delivered to your door. This is the end-to-end scenario, long one, okay? So uh, we could have system, uh, system scenario, system testing, and end-to-end scenario, end-to-end testing. This is the end-to-end testing approach again. Uh, all that levels are just great, still just great. Uh, and uh, we have here a third party system. If we are talking about our application, just imagine that we have some uh, third party application that uh, storage uh, storages some statistics about uh, who uh, logged in, when logged in, and uh, how many times. And it will be our end-to-end scenario. Any questions about system approach, system level? Okay. Uh, Li- uh-huh. Lilia, am yeah, I Marina. right that we can uh, combine these two types of testing system and end to end, performing, for example, end to end loan uh, scenario? And part of it will be system testing. Yes. Yes, it could be. Uh, if okay. we made a decision that end to end testing uh, will be enough, so we uh, we uh, accept that uh, system testing will be part of end to end testing, and we could do it. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. But uh, let me know is that uh, sometime system testing is needed uh, anyway, if uh, even if we uh, want to use uh, end-to-end testing approach as well. Because uh, if we have a network of third-party applications, uh, we better should test system firstly and uh, be sure that uh, there are no critical mistakes there are no critical defects inside the system before we will use uh, the integration with the third party applications because uh, if we will find some uh, defect when we are doing the end to end scenario uh, it will be hard to localize it because uh, we don't know if this defect is connected with uh, some third party application or with our system under test that uh, we are responsible to.
Ok. Ok. Seems that there are no questions uh, about this uh, this approach. So uh, we are going to the pyramid higher, and uh, we are on the peak right now. Uh, what is acceptance testing? Here we have business people and we have users and we have testers. Why do we need all the people here? <clears throat> what is the acceptance testing? <clears throat> Sorry. Before we are starting testing, we should sign a contract with the customer. Uh, and in this contract, we uh, should um, uh, define the criteria of uh, readiness of our application. Because um, how could we uh, be sure that the application is really ready. How many defects should we have in the application? What uh, maximal uh, number of defects could we have in the applications uh, or application uh, to consider this application ready? What user scenarios should uh, be working? Uh, what user scenarios are the most important ones? We should keep in mind that, uh, yes, we will do testing. We will do our best to find the more defects we can. But um, this is the risk. And we cannot be sure, absolutely sure, that we miss something and that we miss something critical. Uh, let me underline it, uh, that we miss something critical. And uh, we actually cannot understand what is really critical for the customer. Uh, of course, if we are talking about some um, simple application or the application from uh, some um, uh, world uh, topic that we are familiar with, like that uh, internet store, for example. Okay, we could um, make some ideas from this. But if we are talking about uh, some uh, complex application or we are not familiar with uh, this particular topic, uh, with these particular objects, like biotech, for example. This is a chemistry application, and we are not familiar with chemistry. We forgot, forgot the chemistry at all. My, our last chemistry was at school. And how could we be sure that we uh, don't miss something important? And that's why we are signing this contract with the customer and we are pro prioritizing our work and we are prioritizing the user scenarios. Which user scenarios are the most important scenarios for this particular application? And we are mm, negotiating about the acceptance criteria. Uh, when our application could be recognized as ready uh, and uh, ready for the production, which scenarios should be working. And when we are doing the acceptance testing at the end of uh, our process, we are practically checking these acceptance criteria, these user scenarios only. We did the system testing, we did the end-to-end -end testing, and now we are retesting 
uh, everything based on these priorities, based on the uh, importance of user scenarios. And this acceptance testing uh, typically is uh, performing on a special, uh, special environment of testing. And this environment um, very looks like production. It is not a production, of course, because uh, we, uh, we could test on production, but it is real, really bad practice. Uh, but we should have some environment that uh, is a mirror of production uh, with the same configuration, with the same data and so on. And we will do this acceptance testing on this uh, pre-production environment, sometimes staging. Remember this term, staging. Uh, so this is acceptance testing. And uh, I mentioned here uh, business people and developers and testers because business people are uh, important people here on this acceptance testing stage. Any questions about the uh, acceptance testing? No questions. Okay, uh, let's step a bit back to this pyramid. Okay, let it be here. Uh, what do you think? Why we have a pyramid? Not a cube, for example. Because of uh, quantity of tests on yes. each level. Yes, yes, Paulina, absolutely right. Uh, and why should we have this quantity of tests on these particular levels? Why so? What do you think? Because the price of error mm -hmm. is bigger. <laughs> yes, yes, right. This is because of the price of error, the price of defect fixing. Uh, the lower level we have found this defect on, the lower price of uh, fixing this defect we will have. Because here, if we found some uh, defect in this little piece of code, uh, to fix it, some developer will need like one or two hours. But if we found find this uh, defect, the same defect on this stage, we have uh, this price um, maybe 10 times more than here. And uh, beside this highest price, we have reputational risks, but because uh, if our defect uh, will be found not by testers, but by business people, this is the lack of reputation. This is the reputational risk. Uh, and uh, this is not very good as you can maybe guess. So, we should have this pyramid. We should have uh, the um, biggest number of tests here and lowest numbers uh, of tests, number of tests here. Absolutely right. So uh, let's go a bit further. And uh, we have only one topic for today. And we will go to the weekend. Testing approaches. That three type or types of boxes. White, gray, and black box. Who knows something about these three boxes? What is it? 
What is it about? It depends on uh, whether we know uh, the code or mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. Uh, but uh, maybe a bit correction. It depends on not whether we know the code or not, because we could use this black box approach with knowledge of the code, but we are not using this knowledge. So we should not forget everything about the code before starting this approach. We could have knowledge of the, uh, about the code in our mind, but we should not use this, this knowledge. So uh, a bit uh, more maybe about these boxes or uh, maybe some new information for somebody who didn't hear about the boxes before. It's okay. So, uh, oh, yes, we uh, are talking about the knowledge about the code. Uh, and here we are using some uh, special techniques of uh, test design based on this knowledge. For example, we could uh, read the code and we could see that here we have a loop here we have a branching. Uh, here we have uh, different modules that are requesting some information from each other. And we are trying to um, create our tests based on this information. We are not interested in um, the point of view of uh, user here. We are interested only um, on the point of view of developers, on the point of view of the code. So we are basing our uh, set of tests on the information that we are getting from the code. E uh, if something is not described in the code, we are not taking it under, the consideration, uh, under consideration. This is the white box approach. Uh, on the other pole, if we are talking about the black box approach, again, we could have knowledge about the code and we could have an ability to read the code or even write the code, but we are on the point of view of user here. And uh, we are not thinking about the code. We are thinking about the requirement of the user or requirement of the customer. And we are basing our tests on this knowledge about the requirement, about the user scenarios. So the black box is about user's point of view or customer's point of view. And white box about the developer's point of view. And between these two approaches, we have a gray box. Uh, when we, again, could have knowledge about the code or ability to write the code even, but uh, we are using only some pieces of this knowledge. And I found this box specially for you with holes. So uh, you can imagine some keyhole, for example, and uh, you are seen from this keyhole and see only the part of the room, not all the room. You can open the door, you can see all the room, and this will be the white box. You can close the door and see the door only, and on, uh, uh, only can uh, know that you have the room, some room. You don't know what will be this room. But you can see from the keyhole and see a part of the room. The same about the uh, testing approach uh, to the software. For example, if you uh, can uh, use the requests from the post for the, from the postman, this is the great box approach. 
you don't know about the code, you don't know how these requests and response are processed inside, um, but you can use them. You are not a user right now. You know something about uh, internal structure of the software. Same with the database. You could uh, see the structure of the database. You could uh, create the ER diagram. You could uh, use some SQL requests to get some information from the database, directly from the database, not from the UI. You are not a user but you are not a developer because you don't know uh, how these um, requests, SQL requests will be processed in a real code. All these JSONs will be processed in a real code. So you are between developer and user. And this is a gray box. So developer's point of view is a white box users or customers point of view is a black box and between them is a gray box. Okay, uh, to have all that in your mind for forever, uh, let's try to apply these boxes to different levels of the pyramid. Unit testing is a white box, of course, because we are talking about the code and we are talking about the position of developers. Integration testing is definitely a gray box because we are uh, familiar with the structure of the software. Uh, we are checking some particular integration in the software. Uh, we know about uh, all that things. Packet is Java, database is MySQL. We know that uh, URLs and ports and so on. Uh, but we don't know the code or we are not using this knowledge. And system testing is a black box. Because uh, all these are great. We are like a customer or like a user, and we are checking the user scenarios. And acceptance testing, of course, is a black box because uh, it doesn't matter for your customer what will be inside the application, how many layers uh, will be there. Uh, and uh, what will be happening with their scenarios? Um, this is just a scenarios and this is the acceptance testing. This is the black box. And uh, to combine everything on one picture, please take a glance on this slide because we have a pyramid here from unit to acceptance testing. We have that uh, Fyodor's favorite schema here with uh, all the three layers and the customer uh, in the top of. And we have that arrows that you already saw on one of the previous slides. And I added here the boxes. Acceptance testing is a black box. System testing is a black box. Integration testing is a gray box and unit testing is definitely a white box. And um, this is a time for the last set of questions. Please feel free to ask. Folks, 
I have no questions. I just want to say <laughs> to you, thank you very much for explanation about boxes, because now for me it is absolutely clear, and this is uh, much greater even than Myers writes in his oh. book, <laughs> because when I read, I understood uh, in a little bit another way, and now I see that uh, uh -huh. I I misunderstood the idea. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, Pauline. <laughs> I think this is the greatest greatest compliment in my life. <laughs> that my explanation is better than Myers. Uh, thank you very much. So, if everything is absolutely clear, uh, there is a, there is no homework for now. Uh, your homework will be uh, next time. Uh, together with the requirements type, uh, the only whole work uh, for for now is if you didn't catch something, please uh, re watch the lecture and uh, try to to catch everything and ask me questions if any uh, before the next lecture. And see you on Monday. And uh, that's all for today. Have a nice evening, have a nice weekend, have a nice Friday. See you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bye.